adventure and to uh, fantasy. Ah, 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 drawing. That was my best uh, Ricardo Montalban from Fantasy Island. Uh, for those of you who are under the age of 30, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But I am Derek T. Stevens, and with me tonight, my handler, the illustrious, Pinkalicious, Miss Sydney Curtis. How are you doing today, uh, Miss Sid? Pinkalicious, apparently. Yeah, that, that just came out. I really did, I was going to call you something else, but that just came out like that. Uh, so, uh, anyway, Mr. Nelson, he's on holiday right now. He's going to a concert and crashing a couple parties. Good for him. So, uh, there may be a small hiccup here and there every now and then, uh, but I have all the faith in the world with uh, Miss Pinkalicious, Miss Sydney Curtis, to be my handler tonight. And we've got a lot to go over. Uh, first of all, last week, uh, it was a huge, huge class. Um, that, that ferry that we drew, I mean, we jumped right into it, and it, it was almost a two-and-a-half-hour class. I really appreciate everyone's patience, and the assignment, of course, was to watch the video again and redraw uh, what we just did. I'm a firm believer in being repetitive. Uh, the more you see, uh, we were just talking about modalities of learning uh, off-air, and we have three modalities that we learn. We learn audio and you can hear me talking visually. We're going to be simulating the visual cortex of your brain. And then uh, experiential, where you get hands-on. And that's where uh, you work with the Wacom tablet, or if you're working on paper, you can scan your homework, and we can look at it there. So I'm really going to try to hit all three modalities of learning. Uh, there's no right or wrong. I don't want you guys to compare yourself to the person over here. We all have different levels that we work at, and that's fine. Uh, just push yourself to be better. I'm going to do the same thing to myself. I learn more from teaching, so I'm very appreciative of that. And uh, tonight, it's all about the dwarves. There will be dwarves up on these hills here, Miss Sydney. We're going to be drawing a very dynamic pose of a dwarf, and we're going to be talking about the beards and the braids of the beard, and we're going to be talking about the armor. The armor is very important. Uh, we're going to draw a, a heavy-plated uh, dwarf tonight. I don't want to do a rogue or some sort of bard or a thief. I thought we'd do some uh, overlapping plated armor. Um, with that said, uh, look at your screen right now. I'm going to throw out a shout to Manga Pro 5. If you can look here, let me get my little pointer out. I encourage everyone, and they're not paying me to say this, so uh, it's real. Uh, this is the pencils I'm doing for a book called Journey, so what, like 110 page graphic novel. This to this with inks from Manga Pro, and then the different tones that you can throw down. I love Photoshop. It's really good, but Manga Pro was set up specifically for comic books. It is specifically, you have templates in there. You have the tones that you can put in there. Uh, you can spin your paper around. The inking is so much and more intuitive to me than Photoshop is. So I really wanted to show you something that I worked on today or it was actually yesterday, uh, look up Manga Pro. It's relatively cheap. I think it's like $80. I respect money, so I wouldn't throw out anything out there that was super expensive that I don't think that you would get use out of. So uh, check out Manga Pro. They have tons of tutorials, and hopefully in the near future, I will be also teaching what I've learned from Manga Pro in a different class. That is in the future. With that said, Miss Sydney, what I need you to do is... Um, Again, because Mr. Nelson's on holiday right now, and we have ins and outs going this way and that way, we're not able to access everyone's homework that has submitted it. I want to thank everyone for doing so. But what we're going to have to do tonight is manually go to screen to screen. So uh, anybody who wants to show homework, I would love uh, for Ms. Uh, Pinkalicious Sydney Curtis to take screens. I'm going to give them a quick critique, and I'm going to do the same, which is going to be the good, the bad, and the good. So Ms. Sid, it's Stu who raises her hand first, and let's go ahead and take screens, because uh, we got a lot to do tonight. Yep, if anyone shows up in the question panels or raises your hand, I will go to you in the order you pop up. Roger that. You really need the sound effect of a cricket going chirp, 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 <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp. Is anybody raising their hands? Uh, yep. Looks like a Jane Gimple. Jane says. Jane, I love that. Yes, Miss Pink Delicious. Jane said. Going to you. All right. Miss Jane, I can't wait to see what you got for me. Hello. Hello, Miss Jane. How are you doing tonight, girl? 
Ah, uh, not too bad. It's Friday, long weekend. Amen. To, wait a minute, you're Canadian. You don't celebrate a Fourth of July. Uh, for uh, first. July first. There's a holiday there, July first. <laughs> in Canada. <laughs> well, in Canada, what do you guys celebrate July first? Canada Day. What else? Oh. Walk on. Well, <laughs> what do you do? What do you do July fourth? Well, actually, it's my 11-year wedding anniversary, July 4th. Well, besides that. Uh, watch fireworks and drink a lot. <laughs> no, it's our Canada Day. Well, rock on. I will celebrate Canada Day with you by toasting you with an adult beverage on the 1st. Okay. But let me look what you got going on so far. Fairy from class, fairy from home. I see your boobies. I know. It, it was late last night. And I had to get to bed because I get up early <laughs> and I forgot. That's, right. <laughs> That's I didn't know if you're like I'm a free spirit. You weren't, hey, Canada Day. You weren't supposed to notice, but you're a guy. What I, can I say? I am a guy. I, you I are do. a guy. That's that's where your eyes gravitate to. Well, let me tell you what. First of all, I love how you did the wings. I loved how you finished them all off. Really good line weight variation. You're, I really loved your flowers. I did not, again, last class I talked about how you really drew those tips, those flowers, and it, it, it's just really well done. It's really pretty. What do you think of the assignment? Uh, not bad. Not bad. I liked it. Good. Steve it Curtis. Fast. It was fast in class, but uh, it was still good. Good. You got a good baseline. Steve Curtis made fun of me. He's like, you oh, you drew something kind of pretty. That's not like you. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck is that supposed to mean? But you did a really good job. Um, I prefer look... the flowers from the class, though. I don't like my flowers that I did last night. They were the last things I did before I go to bed. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm very proud of you for doing that, staying up and doing this homework. That's the only way you get better. Uh, I don't mind, personally, no top on. I'm because I'm a guy. I know you don't. <laughs> uh, I like your bow, and I like your line weight a lot better on this on the ferry from home. And I really Thanks. think it's brave of you to show both in class and out of class. So, Miss Jane, I am very proud of you. You keep it up. Um, what I want you to do next time, uh, we may, even, I'm sure, we'll come to you again tonight. But if you can, bring up some of your very first drawings you did, like in, of a human figure. And let's compare to where you're at right now. I really want people to see this. I want you to be an inspiration. Because, I, I mean, I know this is not easy. Not everybody is blessed where they get to draw all day. And that's all I do all day and all night and draw. You have a normal job, probably a very stressful job, and you still did your homework. So I'm very proud of you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thanks. You're awesome. Who's the next victim, Miss Pinkalicious? Looks like we've got a Clinton Ah, oh, Mr. Clinton from my MMO class. I cannot wait to see what he's got going on. Well, you may be regretting it later. I didn't have as much time to work on this homework because I spent so much time on the MMO. I, I can't. I cannot say yay or nay because I I, I will teach both classes, and you're you're working for the MMO. Uh, but I want you to be a better artist. And by the way, I Facebooked you. I, I took your. Uh, your request, thank you for Facebooking me so we, we can get you know in, in touch easier. So thank you for that. Um, I like the hair. Again, uh, if you look at Disney, I'm always going to say this, Disney hair, the princesses, they, they have huge geometrical shapes in their hair, three or four triangles. And again, hair doesn't look like this. It doesn't. But it's a great read. Your eyes are beautiful. Leg needs to be a little bit thicker. Uh, the quadricep to the knee. But you know what? You didn't have a lot of time. I'm really proud of you because I know you're working your butt off doing normal things. And MMO class, it just keeps piling up. But you're only going to be a better artist because of it. So well done, sir. Thank you. Quite welcome. I'm not trying to cut anybody short, but we got so much to do tonight. So I have to go to my next victim. Chirp, 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 chirp. Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> we are going Dork. to an Eve. Ah, oh, mein Liebchen. Good Abend. Ich liebe dich sehr schlecht. Deutsch, mein Gott. So I'm true for. Wo bist du acht? Looky there, all nice and colored up.
still looks good. So you guys can hear me, but you can't hear Derek. Wonderful. Yes, we can hear you. Says so he's not muted. I will message him on Skype. Looks great, by the way, Eve. <laughs> yeah, you put me to shame, that's for sure. <laughs> practice. Practice makes you better. Mm-hmm. Derek's messaging me. Hopefully we can get this fixed really quick. He's going to unplug and plug again. I'm going to pause recording quick. All right, Eve, to, to get to the point, we have lots to do tonight. Uh, her screen right, her leg, uh, it's too skinny. You, you chose her color. I think you did a great coloring job. I love the shirt, uh, but there's part of her leg missing. Uh, the inner part of the leg, and you chose to hide it with flowers, but not all the way. If you put one more flower in there and to hide that, and I'm not encouraging anyone to hide any anatomy, even though the Tarzan guy hid Tarzan's feet a lot with the grass. Evie did a great job. I'm very glad you're here, and I love the bow. Can't wait to talk to you. We will talk soon. Roger that, Mama. Just have about two to three hours to do it. He did a great job in two to three hours. And again, I really appreciate everybody doing their homework and the homework assignments. It's certainly going to get better. I love you, baby girl. All right, we need the next victim. Waiting for anybody to raise their hand. And if not, that's okay. I will look at the homework assignment folder when Nelson gets oh, back. Oh, we have uh, Mary. Mary? Who the heck is Mary? I don't know. I've never heard. We'll find I've out. I've never, never heard of a Mary before. This is awesome. Mr. Clinton and I are like surrounded by hot chicks. This is cool. And that's not a bad word, so you don't push your red button to shock me. Ow. <laughs> Holy crap on a cracker. I didn't see that. Bring it back. It shouldn't be changing, but... Uh, I don't see it. I see my screen. You see your screen? I see my screen. And again, guys I and gals... I think we may have lost her. I think we may have lost her. Oh, no. Oh, you there? Are you... Hello, Miss Mary. How are you doing tonight? How are you doing tonight? There we go. Brilliant. Look at that. You have a different health. Are you a Curtis? Because Curtis by traits do stuff their own way. No, I'm not a Curtis. I'm a Miss Mary, and I'm awesome. Well, yes, you are Miss Mary. You're very awesome. Oh, mic issues. All right. No, okay. Here we go, uh, Miss Mary. I want to talk to you. You may need to get a new mic and sort that out, but here I'm going to do the critique. Uh, because you're sounding, you, you sound like the guy in the wheelchair. I'm Stephen Stephen Hawkins. Um, good line weight variation. I, I love your fingers and your hand positions. I love that we can see toes. I love that you put little antennae on there. I love that you made it her own. I love that you drew the eyes uh, with really high uh, line weight variation because it's, it's drawn in. I love that... Uh, her, her top looks beautiful. I definitely want to talk to you next time. We got your mic sorted out, okay? You did great, and I'm glad that you did it by pencil and you scanned it in, or you took a picture of it. Uh, Facebook me, Derek Stevens, or uh, get a hold of me on 3D Buzz. I am the Crow, T H E C R O W. We'll definitely talk because I have plans for you. Maybe I can get you my MMO class and we can get some art started. All right? I appreciate you, and I'm sorry I can't hear you, but next time we'll get you sorted out. 
really good stuff. I love that. She's got to be a Curtis at heart because that's so. All right. It does not look like we have any more hands up, so. Well, then we got to get started, then, girl. All right. You ready? Back to Miss Mary, awesome job. She may be having some computer problems. All right, listen, here's the deal. I'm going to do a new 200 DPI, and we'll just, for sake of sake, we'll do 10 by 10. We'll do 200 D, oh, that's 100. 10 by 10, 200 DPI. This is a working screen, all right, ladies and gentlemen? What we're going to do here is I need to, uh, I need to get my hand-eye coordination going. It's going to be a five-minute drawing. Um, and then we're going to jump right into everything. I'm not going to take screens. Uh, I'm not going to, actually, I'll take the first two, okay, the first two people who want to volunteer, but after that, we got to jump into the lesson, but we really need to warm up. I honestly believe whenever I start out in the morning, when I come here, I have the propensity of drawing Nightcrawler's hand over and over with three fingers, and that's how I get my hand and my eye coordination, you know, motivated and moving, and the juice is flowing. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a dark superhero today, I'm going to hit my B for brush button again. This is 200 DPI, 10 by 10. And uh, Miss uh, Pink Delicious said, you give me a five-minute countdown. You say go, and we got five minutes. Roger that. Roger that. And go. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, oops, I probably should have. Let me make a different layer here. Okay, I'm on that layer. Uh, <clears throat> you don't have to follow along, but since we've been talking about anatomy, I'm choosing to do kind of a, a dynamic sort of superhero-looking thing, and I really want you guys to watch on how I'm, I'm starting to draw all this stuff out so you guys can see that at different, different modalities. I have my big, broad chest. I have my shoulders. And my head, my neck through here, a pectoral region through here, latissima dorsi through here, connected all like this. The, as my four-year-old says, crotch area, crotch. Oops, I don't like that. Hold on. I'm going to control T, bring it over here a little bit like this, enter. And then back to my brush, make circles for the knees. And so, my elbows, my wrist, this arm back here is kind of hidden. And so, so I'm going to make another layer, come back to the first layer, bring down the opacity quite a bit, go back to my new layer. And then I'm going to start doing some blacks. I'm going to follow this around like this. This is how the deltoid and pectoral range meet up. You have your tricep to bicep, your elbow, and then your forearms, fist. Latissima dorsi through here, small hint where the hip sat, small hint when the hip, hip sat, crotch area, hence where the leg muscles are at, kneecaps, bicep is a bit flexed because the way the arm's at, this becomes kind of a diamond shape here. Working on the face, my little V area. I'll just do a racer tool. Oh, bullocks. Racer tool through here. Let me sh get close up for you. And what I'm going to do here is make the start of my mask. Bring this back out here a little bit. The rib cage, some abdomen area. I'm going to bring my brush area up like this. I'm going to do it on time, Sid. 
You still there, girl? Oh. We're at 321. Okay, so I'm coming up through here like this. We got some spiky areas right through here like this. So do you have any idea who I'm sketching out? Do you have any idea who this is, Sid? Spawn? You are so awesome, yes. McFarlane actually made this in high school, if you believe the stories. And so let's just grab a red color right here. So it's important that you guys keep your drawings because you never know when you guys are going to... Uh, <laughs> make it big or the next big thing. Now, I hated the movie. Really hated the movie. But the comic is good. When Spawn first started, now, okay, real quick, you notice that uh, the way I'm drawing the cloak, in my opinion, McFarlane was like one of the very first fusion artists because his cloaks were always very angular. Forty seconds. All right. Indication where some buildings are going to be at for a cool perspective view. On top of a building. Got a little moon going on. You need to stop, sir. All right. So that's a quick five-minute sketch and this is literally how I start all my comic book stuff off uh, I'll get this and I'll throw it down um, and I, I make thumbnails like this and then I lay them all out and then I'll start refining 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 so we got the five minute drawing down I hope everyone is sorted out and good to go I'm going to take this out here like this I don't need to save this anymore uh, what is this one here I don't need that obviously and we don't need that one obviously but we do need this one here. Oops, you don't need to see all that stuff right now. I will just do the base body. All right, so let's look at my image. And it's important I want you guys to do the same thing. Image size, I have it at 300 DPI, and we'll just call it 11 by 8. This is close enough to 8, so 11 by 8. And I'm going to make another layer here. I'm going to call it base body zero two. And I've already drawn him in blue. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I always start from the center mass. Miss Pinkalicious, why do I start from center mass? I have no idea. Really? You've been in how many classes of mine and you don't know that? I will flog you with a wet noodle when I see you again. I'd like to I see start you try. with it's all in my Donkey Kong, baby. I start with center mass and through here. So I start with center mass here. I know I can build my character with the, con the confines of my paper here. So what we're going to do here is start to draw everything out. I have a different layer drawn on it or laid down so I can draw through everything. Uh, what I want you guys to do is let me hold on. Opacity up all 100 percent bring my brush area up like this. I really want you guys to start making a circle through here like this. This is where the area is going to be for the, his chest. So you're making a circle over and over and over here like this. And the way the angle's drawn, that I've drawn, his head's going to peek over the chest. So we're making a center mass for the chest here. And the pectoral range, we know what the pectoral looks like, comes in through here like this. You have that split right down the middle. You have three striations, the upper, middle, and lower pectoral range. So I know this is where this is going to be. And so I can determine how long my arms are going to be. I want to draw my head right now. And again, we're drawing fantasy work. Uh, usually your head is this big, so one head length long is from here to your shoulder, uh, to your elbow. Let me undo real quick. 
Is that backwards? Okay. So let me zoom in for you. I have my base down here. I'll even erase some of these guidelines through here. And your first guideline, your first base drawing should be in blue if you're using Photoshop and you're working in layers because I want you to draw through everything. And I have this big area because it's a big barrel chest for a dwarf. And I'm going to start drawing the head through here. And the head, again, is this. There's two ways to go about. You can draw a circle like this. And you have the big, broad sort of chin up here like this. Now that's one way. Go backwards. I usually start out like this. I just make a, oops, make an oval around this area like this for my head. And if you, if you look at dwarves, it's kind of perplexing. You've seen uh, the new Hobbit movie, right, Sid? Yeah, I have. I love it. But, you know, the dwarf is pretty angular, the, the, the lead dwarf. I mean, he's got a strong jawline. He's not round and baby fattish. So what I wanted to do, again, because I'm a fusion American artist, when I build this circle like this, this oval, so to speak, what I want to do is I'm going to come through here and give him a nice jawline. And this is going to be flat through here like this. And make another part of the jawline through here. Let's go ahead and raise the skyline like this. So I've got my head all drawn. I'll give you guys a moment to catch up. Uh, if there's any questions in the panels, please do not be afraid to ask. Uh, I don't mind slowing down. I know last ferry... Uh, I guess lesson was very fast, and again, this is going to be a little fast too. But we'll put our big boy and girl pants on. So there's so much I want to show you and share. Uh, with that said, uh, we will be. Uh, ow! Okay, fine. Sid just shocked me. I, I can't tell you what we're going to be doing at 3D Buzz, but I can tell you. Ow! I can tell you some things that. Or I can't tell you anything. I'm sorry, Sid. There's some great things coming down the pipeline where I will be slowing things down a lot. And you'll be able to say, okay, here's how to draw the face. This is one lesson. Here's how to draw the body. This is the other lesson. So you don't have to scrub through this entire program of me being silly. So I guess that's what I want to say. But do your best to keep up at the moment. Uh, we have the head drawn up like this. Uh, and Miss Pinkalicious, if you can, make sure you watch uh, the questions and comments and stuff. I want to make sure everyone's being able to follow along, okay? Okay, that sounds great, Derek. Thank you very much, Sid. <clears throat> okay, we have the head. We draw a strong jawline, a nice chin jawline through here. We have the barreled chest, the pectoral region. Now, this area right through here, this is the latissimus, I'm sorry, uh, trapezius muscle. That comes up through here. And ideally, I would draw a thin line to thick line like this. That's attaching everything. And the shoulder, if you look at the shoulder relationship to the head, it is almost touching that jawline. So with the deltoid, I'm going to draw it like this. And in the anatomy class, you know it has three striations. We have the inner, middle, and outer head. And we can just vary it up like this, almost a teardrop shape. Now, what we're doing is... We're drawing all this, and a lot of it's not going to show because we have armor. But I honestly believe by doing this, it's a good representation and being repetitive to learning where anatomy is. So when you draw your own characters, you may not have armor at this particular place. You'll need to be able to show it. And again, with this dwarf, his arm is flexed. We have the circle for the deltoid. And we have the tricep areas right here. The tricep is a bigger muscle because it has three, meaning tri. Bicep has two because his arm is flexed ever so slightly, the bicep is going to be a little bit bigger. And through here like this, I'm going to do take my eraser tool like this and erase some of the guidelines that we have going on here like this. So the bicep is not huge like that. It's not that flexed. He's not Popeye. And we have the tricep area coming through here. The tricep will come down here, and a sharp angle kick out like this. 
Again, we can make it a little bit more line weight variation. And if you notice, my initial guidelines through here, if you measure from here to here, this is from here to here how long it is, and then one head length long from here to here, then we have the hand. All right, so we have this position of the dwarf, the head. We have the big area through here. His clavicle will be, will be hidden. Uh, pectoral range, abdominal muscle, deltoid, three heads, bicep, tricep. The tricep is extended to the, let me make yet another layer real quick and get a different color here for you. Oops. When I draw my, my figures like this, you have the all-known radial bone uh, that you have to worry about. The radial bone is on the thumb side right here as such. Let me hide this layer. I don't really need that anymore. Go back to black. And the reason I draw that, I call it a guideline. Where am I at? Do, 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 do. All right, here I am. So we have our elbow through here, and they're called flexor muscles in through here. They're coming like this. Be a nice thin line to thick line. Thick line to thicker line like this. And when I draw my hand, I literally... Again, in an anatomy class, you can find this. I draw a square like this. I know my hands are going to be here. And he, his hand is balled up. So after I draw my initial lines, my guidelines in through here, I have my radial bone here, my thumb area through here. And if you look at your hand and you balled up, you have a piece of meat, piece of skin through here. And this is already one. This is one digit, one phalange, the bone. Two, three, four, five, and then the meat of the hand comes out like this and comes in sharply and attaches. And I'll come back, erase some of my guidelines. Again, this is a 103 class. I don't want to move along too fast, but I honestly believe by now you guys know what the deltoids look like, the biceps and the triceps. But I want to pause for you guys to catch up. Um, who needs more time? Go ahead and raise your hand, and Miss Pink Delicious will be able to, to tell me. We can pause the video for like three to four minutes. Anybody need a break? Miguel raised his hand. Okay, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's go ahead and pause the video right now. We'll give you guys five minutes to catch up. Sorry, guys, after that small pause, I, I wanted to take a small break for everybody in our live class. And I encourage everybody who is watching this right now, go ahead and scrub back and see what you're doing. Um, and let's go ahead and continue. We have our deltoid right here, our three striations. It's a shoulder muscle. And from here, we have our other deltoid that is back through here. Deltoids are big. They get big, 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 and they come small. Uh, let me zoom in here like this. You can also see where I have my uh, my breakdown for where my eyes go. In between this area here, this area here, this is where the eyes go. This is the bottom of the nose. In between here is the mouth. So our eye comes in through, or actually, hold on me. Our eyeball is going to be right through here. So we trace this back. This is where the ears are going to go. So from the ear, right through here, the deltoid is a little bit above where the ear is at. Now we'll go ahead and draw the ear here. Draw the ear here. Because everything we do, we build upon. It's not in class, but I mean, in a drawing, it, we're looking for landmarks. Remember landmarks. Let me bring some of that uh, tra trapezius muscle through here. And again, because the dwarf is stocky, he's built strong. Uh, muscle and his bicep will be a bit flexed and then I'm going to bring this out through here and if you could imagine let me make another layer real quick 
through here like this, if the circle is touching this circle. It's going to come through here, this is where the hand's at, so it's even. It's a good way to cheat for perspective because I'm not making perspective lines. However, Manga Pro 5 does do that, and I can't wait to go over that with you. So I'm going to take that area out right here, and I need to go back to my base body too, make sure this is the right one. Okay, there we go. And I draw a square for where my hand's going to be. So we've done the face, we've done the big barrel chest, we've done the deltoid, did the bicep tricep, we did the flexor muscles through here. Uh, so we need to draw a crotch area, everyone's favorite. It's always funny when someone else gets kicked in the crotch, that's not a bad word. So I draw the crotch area. Is your dad here tonight, Miss Sid? I do believe so. All right, good. Yep. Just making sure. All right, good. So if he needs to chime in on anything, I'm going too fast, or he thinks I've, I've skipped anything, make sure that you go to him, because I respect him. He's one heck of an artist. I said heck, not H-E double toothpicks, so I don't owe a quarter. If you uh, look through here really close and tight, when I drew my initial baseline, this area right through here, this is his hip, his pelvic area. From here to here, it is one head length long. If you were to take the head and turn it sideways, it's from here to here, head one head length long. But because he is standing right here on his, his, his foot, his quadricep will be flexed. And again, as a fusion artist, I really hit that angle and bring it down like this for where his kneecap would be right through here. And again, the dwarf is stocky, so you have one head length from here to here. Turn it back around like this. Actually, you know what I'm going to do here? Let's just take this here. I'm going to hit Control-C, Control-V, so I can move some stuff around. Okay, from the shoulder to his deltoid, one head length long. And I know you don't have a pencil. You can't hit Control-T, but I do. I hit Control-T like this from the elbow to the wrist, one head length long. And then his hand is one head length long. And then, oops, as I was saying, from the crotch area to his knee, one head length long. From the knee to the foot, one head length long. His foot itself, ah, bullocks. Is about one head. So I will give you guys a moment to digest that. And again, I'm going to go through it again because I believe in being repeating. It really sinks in. I have a five-year-old, a four-year-old, and a seven-year-old, and you have to tell them several times. Not that you guys are kids, but when you are repetitive on something, it's going to, it's going to get into your cortex. You're going to remember it. So here's my head from the shoulder to the elbow, one head length long. From the elbow to the wrist, one head length long. His hand, because he's a dwarf and this is a fantasy style, very mangish, fusion style, is a huge hand, one head, head high or wide. His crotch area, from the crotch to the knee, one head. I switch it around like this. From the knee to the foot, one head. His foot size is one head. Now, I've not done or boogered with this area right through here, but let's test it out, shall we? Yes, we shall. Right, Miss Sid? What was that? I said, I've not boogered with this area right through here. His, it would be his left leg. Well, let's see if everything holds true to measurement, because from here to here is one head length long. So ideally, from the crotch to his knee is one head length long from here to his kneecap. Yay! Now, we're seeing more. It's elongated. Again, it's a dynamic pose. So from the knee now to the foot, it's about a third of a head length long. And his foot again is one head length long. So I hope that helps, because uh, 
I mean, seriously, that's that's how I do it. Whenever I do all my comic book work, I, I, I sit and I measure this. Um, anyway, let's get out of this area right through here. Make that disappear. I have some sort of blue mark here. My computer has a virus. Miss Sid asked me, why do I have a virus? Why do you have a virus, Derek? Well, funny you should ask that, Sid. It's because I am watching Game of Thrones and downloading it on my computer and some gorilla, what you call it, and I have all sorts of weird crap poking up that should not be poking up. So that's why I have a virus. I need to scrub it all tomorrow and sort that all out. So we we talked about all the head links, this and that. I love Game of Thrones, by the way. Everybody dies. Don't get attached to anybody. Uh, <clears throat> with that said, I want to be a faceless guy and assassin. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. Delete that. I need to... Sid, it's your job to keep, keep me focused. Tell me to stay focused. Stay focused, Eric. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so... All this is through here is almost, well, it's, it's a triangle because we have three sides here. So I draw this, like this here, and I have my foot. We've already established the length of the leg. We have his bottom, his gluteus maximus right through here, quadricep through here like this. The start of his uh, gastri uh, gastrocnemius is over here. And then I have a foot that's here like that. And I literally have a really cool baseline for my character here. I hope you guys have something similar at this point. I will take the first two people that want to share their screen. So be brave and let me see it. You can just volunteer yourself in the questions or BuzzNet chat if you've already raised your hand. Why is Drew's little V here towards kneecap? I know that's where the knee goes. You got anybody, baby girl? Wolf Knightley. Oh, heck yeah, because Wolf is like all about this. Question, do you think he's going to be a smart aleck, like said? Eh, maybe, very possible. Very possible. Awesome! Awesome! Dude, you're like on fire. That Am is like, yeah. Huh. Seriously, you're on fire. Okay, this the, his his hand behind his leg, and I'm pointing to my screen. I can see this. I love that arch, that sharp angle right there. You have the knuckle, and you've drawn through. Brilliant job, dude. Oh, well, cool. I'm proud of you. It's well, a little yeah. different than yours, but okay. Real quick, how's mine? How's yours different from mine? I can't see it. Oh, uh, there's there's little things like uh, I think the this thumb. hand a little bit over, but like this foot isn't that big, so I think th this area here is uh, more condensed. Well, a lot of that's going to be covered by armor here in a little bit, but yeah. you have a great baseline. Yeah, whenever you, and I, I don't know how many people want to do comic books for a living. Uh, e even concept, I was commissioned to do uh, four demons. Uh, for a book that I have to do concept for. And I, I start out like this, and then I just refine, refine, refine. This is a brilliant, beautiful baseline for you to build on because you have a, a dynamic pose, and you can start throwing armor on it. Yeah. Are you still there? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I just got a message. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it kind of it kind of freaks me out to draw without uh, doing the skeleton first, but I'm, I'm hanging in there. You're doing great. Let me have one more victim. Keep it up, dude. Thanks. Next, we have a Miguel Ramirez. Miguel, baby, what's up? Miguel, you there? Hola. Wow. Miguel, are you there? All right, maybe your mic's not working. But I just want to say, okay, I want you to hit your, uh, do the control T thing for me. Can you do that? I want you to rotate him to the right just a little bit so he's, he's standing. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. 
uh, get oh, your okay. select tool, your box tool, uh, the first, or actually the second tool. There you go. Rotate them a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. A little bit. Boom. That's there. Back a little bit more to your, to your left. And one more. And stop. Perfect. Perfect. You guys are doing great. Miguel, I am proud of you. Uh, the deltoid, his, uh, the outer head is a little bit big. But again, it's going to be it's going to be covered by armor when we get to the armor. Did you put uh, nipples the head's on him? Big. No, no, not not the head, the deltoid, the shoulder. Did you put nipples on him? Are those his no. legs? No, <laughs> they're just legs. <laughs> oh, I'm like, wow, dude. Okay, <laughs> as you erase it. Okay, they're well, gone. <laughs> well, Miguel, because you're in my MMO class, you're part of my art team. Uh, I've seen you grow so much in like the last two to three weeks. I want everyone else to, to understand that you've grown a lot. This is a dynamic pose, and you've done great. You, you made me feel like a little kid. Uh, the frosted mini wheat side, I don't know if you guys have frosted mini wheats in Mexico, but the frosted side is the kid side. The wheat side is the adult side. You did great. Great job. Oh, thank you. Seriously, awesome job. All right, we'll get back to lecture now. Congratulations. You get a, a gold star. Stead, send him a gold star. You have a gold star. Rock on. <laughs> All right, take my screen back. Oops, hold on. <laughs> Don't laugh, Sid. All right. All right, so we have our baseline character done, right? So I'm going to look through my layers. I've got tons of layers through here. Base face. I'm going to turn my base face on, and I'm really going to ah, come in here through like this. And let me turn my base body back on. I really can't do this, Sid. All right, base. Now, if you can look at my base drawing, I draw a blue line straight down the middle. And, and he looks weird because he, he doesn't have a beard. Straight line down through here and through the eyes and all that stuff go. And if you look at your, and I've said this plenty of times, if you trace, find the corner, the outermost corner of your eye and trace it all the way back to your ear and that's where the eyes are going to go. It's a little bit above, a little more ear here. So I'm going to hit brush. I'm going to get back to my base body number two that I drew. I really need to put my glasses on. It's my base face. <laughs> All right, here we go. Maybe no. Pause the video for just a second. Said while I sort this out. You're on mute, Sid. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're so back. My, my, I'm back. Thank you. So my guidelines through here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush down a lot and I don't want a sexy cool pretty eye I want an awesome like I'm going to kill you eye so again what we're going to do is we have our baseline already drawn straight line through here we have our baselines for the eyes we're going to go we have our landmark for the ear I'm going to come in through here like this Let's pump up my brush just a little bit I'm making it heavy. I really believe, as an artist, I, I love to look at eyes. Eyes are the windows of the soul. So you see that line? It's just a, a busy eye. That's a French word. Busy eye. Busy eye. Is that the right word, Sid? Don't ask me. All right, All right fine. So I have this small arch of an eye. You're coming through here like this. 
close it up. What I'm doing here is just throwing some, some lines in here for his face. I really want to put some detail on it. And the way I picture dwarves and the way I've seen dwarves drawn and in Lord of the Rings, they have these big bushy eyebrows, henceforth my baseline, the, the big bushy eyebrow. The eyebrow comes right up through here. And just have fun with it. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Eyebrows. Make it bushy. And once you make it bushy through here, you can come back in. And all I'm doing is making small a little bit hash lines. So if I take off my base face, that's what I've created. Let's just go ahead and extend that. If if you're aged and weathered, been out in the weather a lot, the sun, you're going to have like these, these crow's feet thing through here. So, and usually they're threes. So they're coming through here. I'll turn my base face back on. And and dwarves, they're they're not delicate creatures. They they usually and the way we, we're familiar with them, they have huge, huge noses. So we have our his right nostril and through here. We have the tip, which is a V. His left nostril. And you have these crease lines that come from the tip. You have to remember to draw from the tip down like this. From the tip, draw down like this. And I usually like to make a little highlight right through here. So you have a big, wide nose. You have flaring out nostrils. You have sort of like laugh lines that are deep and crusted and all that sort of stuff. And what I wanted to do, I love chicks with eye patches. I never dated one or married one, but, you know, there's always a future. So uh, I gave him an eye patch. And the eye patch, let me pop up my brush stroke a little bit like this. There we go, like this. So I've given him another one, black it all in. So if I turn my base face off, we have this going on right here, and you can already tell, crease here, small V for the nose to indicate the bottom of the nose, a small highlight to hit the tip of the nose. We have the eye, the crow's feet, we have the baseline of the eye patch. Go back to base face, I room my brush size down a little bit, and what I'm doing here is, and you can make it any way you want. But I have this, this small indication here. This is attaching directly to the eye patch. And the eye patch is going to come all, oops, books. All the way through here, a nice straight line. Another nice straight line. And now this is where the imagination goes wild. What I do is I draw one crease right here, small circle, semicircle here, circle here, and literally there's no right or wrong, it's just, it needs to look cool. So if I take my base face off, and bring it back like this, this is what we have so far. To recap, again, being repetitive, we've drawn the eye, the bushy eyebrow, the big nose, the V-shape for the nose, uh, the nostrils, the flanks of the nostrils each way, the eye patch. And since we have this, this area here tied up to the eye patch here, we have to find a way, bullocks, we need to find a way to tie this and anchor it in here so it stays in place. So what I, I tend to do is if this is the area where everything's being tied into place, I'll take this line through here and draw through like this. Let 
and we have an eye patch. Obviously, the dwarf has been around a few times. Turn my base face back on. We need to draw some cheekbones into him. He's not an elf, but he's weathered, so I got indications where his cheekbones and they're in the fusion type sort of style. And what I do here is if you crinkle your nose up, you can really tell you have some sort of wrinkles through here. So our rendering, he's looking at you and he's not for sure what's up with you. And we can tell his stance, it's a ready stance, okay? He's ready to like rock and roll and to take a weapon out if need be. He's at a ready stance. So I try to throw some emotion in here. We've done one eyebrow, so let's go ahead and draw the other eyebrow. Come in here through like this. And the eyebrow is going to come underneath the eye patch. Draw through. My wife's a professional hairdresser and makeup artist. She would so want to tweeze these. I turn my base face off like this. And then I turn my base off. And this is what we have so far. We've done the head, the big barrel chest. We've done the shoulders, the deltoids. We've made my pointer tool so you guys can see this. Deltoids, bicep, tricep, the flexor muscles. We have the hand. We've drawn through this area right through here where the hand's going to go at. We've already calculated all the head length so we have the proper measurements. It's the kneecap to the foot. Kneecap to the foot. Let's turn the base face back on here. And let's go ahead and draw the mouth, shall we? Sounds like a great idea, Miss Sid. Right? Uh, unless you want to stop for break. It is 10.09. Hmm. Let's, let's go ahead and draw the, the mouth first, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll come back. How's that? Is that cool with you? Sounds good. All right. So if you can look... A small V goes here like this. Small V comes through here like this. This little circle right here will be a spot black. You can't really see his mouth, what's inside the mouth, the teeth and the, and the, the tongue and all that. So this is the upper lid of the mouth. We break it up. Now we're not going to like connect everything because it's too much of a woman's type sort of mouth. In the fusion style, we just have a small indication right through here where the lip sat. If we want to, we can bring our brush size down a little bit. Like his mouth is dry, and if I close my base face off, and you shave a dwarf, and without any clothes, that's what he's going to look like. When we come back from break, we're going we're gonna to draw a beard on him. And then we're going to start doing armor. And the armor is going to be very plated. He's a heavy armor type sort of character. He's, he's a fighter, not a rogue. He's not a bard. He's in your face, and I'm, I'm going to throw my two swords sort of thing at you. So uh, during break, go ahead and go in for a break, get a drink, use the bathroom, and we'll take, we'll say, seven minutes. You have two minutes to do all those other things, and you can come back and get to where we're at right now. You guys are doing great. Stick with it. And we'll be back in seven minutes. Hey, everybody. Uh, we took a small break here at uh, the 3D Buzz Cave and the bunker here at the Derek T. Stevens abode. And I personally, uh, again, went outside and cut the grass with scissors. Uh, and Miss Pinkalicious, uh, she mixed 15,000 drinks and gave them to the homeless. Uh, so I don't want to be driving in Dixon, Tennessee right now. So uh, now that we're back... Uh, <clears throat> I want to take the first bullet so long, control C. Let's take uh, one individual who's brave enough to show me what they're doing right now so I can see, engage where we're at, and then we're going to draw the beard, and then we're going to draw the armor. Who's the first hand up, Miss Sid? Anybody want to go? You can say so in the chat or in the questions panel. Roy, the dwarf Lover. Looks weird. Roy Lover, are you James Myers? What is your name? Mary, alright, never mind. 
Mary's gonna go. <laughs> Mary, Mary, Mary contrary. How does your garden grow? Hold on. That was, that was so not appropriate. Sorry. I see buzz nuts. Miss Mary, how are you doing tonight, baby girl? I call everybody baby girl, so I'm sorry. Uh, can't wait to see what you got. Wait a minute, Mary. You are so a Curtis. You've already drawn the beard <laughs> and this hat. Holy crap on a cracker, girl. You're doing awesome. And right through here, the deltoid, beautiful deltoid. Not the position I'm drawing. That's cool. You, you're doing your own thing. I respect that. I love how you drew the nostrils. I like to see some more nostril lines through here. Because uh, the, way, the way I picture a dwarf, you don't have to do it, but I want to see some creases in his lines, some, uh, I guess, some, some age, some experience. Uh, can you hear, can you talk? Can you talk yeah. now? Mm -hmm. Hey, how you doing, Mary? I'm doing good. So where are you from? I'm from uh, Wisconsin. I know. So was the whole freaking Curtis clan. Sid's from Wisconsin. Sid, where are you from in Wisconsin? I'm from Illinois. Uh, Milwaukee. You're from Milwaukee, Mary? Yeah. Yes. yes. Then you know the safe house, right? Oh, yes, I do. Man, I've been there, like, several times. I used to go there for uh, uh, Gen Con. That's where I got the majority of my work. I go there for Gen Con when they had it there and, and would get work for, like, a year. So that's that's awesome. You know what? Uh, and for those who do not know what uh, the safe house is, when I first went there uh, as the publisher and my second wife, I'm always looking for a, a future ex, Mrs. Stevens. Um, my publisher vouched for my second wife and he didn't vouch for me. They went in and and the lady at the front said, you need to know the password. And, and the password, I'm like, it's swordfish. It's always swordfish. And it was not swordfish. It was, I'm looking for a safe house. And she made me take my shirt off and put a hula skirt on and an Elvis wig. And I had to sing Elvis stuff. Uh, I think it was Heartbreak Hotel, I sang. And then she would let me in. And this, this whole wall would, like, open up. I'd go in and people like, ah, oh, they clap. Because they have, like, TVs and cameras on you to show what a fool you're making yourself. So I, I know Wisconsin, it's well. And my, my buddy Christopher Shy lives in Wisconsin, so that's cool. Uh, so let me ask you. Uh, how much experience do you have with this? Have you been published yet? No, I haven't been published yet. I'm trying well, to get there. All right. Well, you know, I do an MMO class on Wednesdays. It is same time, 9 Eastern to 11 Eastern. Uh, I'd love it. And think about it. Uh, we're doing a comic book for the Alethians. We're making this huge game uh, concept-wise uh, for a giant MMO. If you can... If you can get in there, if you have time, I'd definitely like to talk to you and uh, see if I can't get you or stuff on 3D Buzz. Uh, have you done comic book stuff before? Um, I've only did it for fun. I never actually did it seriously. Well, seriously, you need to do it for fun. How's that? Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right, I'm really, really blown away with what you got. And... Uh, it, it, oddly enough, can you see my cursor move around? Woo, look at that. Can you see that? I like the braids through here and here and, and the beard. So we're going to be drawing something like that. Um, as the, a semi-accomplished artist, and I'm trying to engage myself, am I being helpful to you? Mm -hmm, that, definitely. I took the class so that I can draw things outside of my comfort zone. So this is definitely a class that's benefiting me in that way. All right, so what is your comfort zone? What do you draw for, for fun? Um, typically, I draw a more anime style. So I, I kind of want to introduce some more realism to my anime style. So Awesome. Yeah. Uh, between you and me and the Finn's post, I hate dwarves. I hate them with a passion. <laughs> I really hate dwarves. I, but I don't look like an elf. I wish I looked like an elf. I was in a movie set that, like. <laughs> about a month ago, and we were actually talking about it. Like, I want to look like an elf. I wish I looked like an elf. And this, guy, this girl, and so I got this girl, like, well, well, elves look like girls, and you look like a dude. <laughs> well, I'm a dude. 
Uh, so anyway, with that said, I, I don't really like hell. Uh, I don't really like dwarves, but they're potent in, in the fantasy style. So you're doing really well out of your comfort zone. I'm out of my comfort zone as well, so I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. You need to Facebook me ASAP or you hold me on 3D Buzz, okay? Promise me that? Okay, we'll do that. Roger that, mama girl. All right, let's get back to the lesson. Keep it up, all right? Yep, we'll do. Roger that. All right, Miss uh, Pinkalicious, take my screen back, and we will continue to move on. Wow, I just, I, I keep seeing Mary's dwarf in my head. I'm like, hmm. But I don't have my beard yet. We don't have our beard yet. I mean, he looks like a shaved rat. Have you seen a bald rat, Sid? No. What, really? Well, they're ugly. And so let's make this dwarf... I'm going to my my layers tool area right through here. Face, face, beard. Boop. A little hard to see because it's green. It's not easy being green, right? So I have that shown, and I am still on. Again, this is kind of like a Photoshop tutorial thing. Still on my base layer. So when I put brush, B for brush. I'm still drawing through here. What I want to do is I'm going to come because this, this layer is already, it's not chosen, but it's showing. So I can erase on this layer here. What I'm going to do is hit my E button for my eraser tool. And again, we, uh, it's the importance of layers, okay? So I am now still on my base layer, but I have my, my beard showing. I'm going to pump up my brush up a little bit and try to do Mary some justice here. And I don't know how many dudes are out there. It seems like we're, we're woman crazy, and I'm cool with that. But And I'm sure they're very much more uh, observational than, than I am. I can't find the ketchup in my refrigerator, let alone... Anyway, so what we're going to do is see how the beard comes all the way up through here to the cheekbone that we drew. This is our first landmark. And it's a triangle. One, two, three lines through here. And I want to do some braids through here. I come back down this other area where I drew my landmark through here like this. What I'm doing here is drawing where his braids are going to be at, a braid holder, so to speak. And then I have fun with it. I literally just start making the lines like this. And since I've already drawn my base layer through here, this little triangle through here, I'll draw some more hair in this area like this. So when I turn off my, it's my beard. Where's my beard? Here we go. Like this. This is what it should start be looking like. And we're starting to have our first indication of hair growth. Let me take this out through here like this. And we're going to be erasing a lot because once we apply armor on through here, some of it's going to be hidden from the beard. What I'm doing is drawing some different striations, and they're just straight lines. But it gives the idea and the read of where hair is at. Call this, or erase this out through here like this. Turn my beard layer back on. Come back through here. So we have one triangle essentially two right triangles of the beard. And then I'm going to come up through here with the lower part of the lip. And I'm doing straight lines. And where this connects through here, a nice wavy line like this. More striations of the beard. And then we have yet another hair braid for the beard. 
and where the hair, I guess, coordinates it, it meets. I'm making some lines through here like this. Let me control Z this. I need to bring my brush down a little bit more. And then I put more striations in here like this. So when I turn my beard off, my layer, and now he's starting to look more like a dwarf. Dwarves and lore, <clears throat> except for Dark Dragon Age. I've seen a couple beardless dwarves, which I think is silly. Uh, but it is what it is, right? Hit brush again. This is where I have some fun with it. I'm going to come really close in here, and this is just because of detail. Bring my brush down a little bit more. And I'm making squiggly lines. Mr. Stephen Curtis would say gribble marks, gibble marks, or something like this. But when we pull it back like this, we see some indications of detail. Right? Right. So let's go ahead and draw the rest of our beard. Because we have one, two striations over here, we need to find a way to draw one, two over here. So I need to get rid of the pictorial range about right here hit my B for my brush again and I'm going to start from the outer layer like this one two bring some striations like this and because the second one in has a braid I want to have another braid through here I'll start up through here like this and if you look from here to here pretty darn close to where the braid holder is at, and I'm just making gibble marks. We have it like this. So when I turn my beard back on, let's see how close I am. Pretty close. Not dead on, but pretty close. So this is what a dwarf should look like right now. We got a strong beard going on. We got the eye patch, deltoids, biceps, triceps, triceps. I like triceps. My triceps are actually sore from working out today. We have the trapezius muscles and the easy trapezius muscles right here. Trapezius muscles, the easy way to remember the trapezius muscles. If you're a trapeze artist, those muscles should be kicking, okay, because you're, you're swinging. It's like the chimpanzee from tree to tree. Their trapezius muscles are huge. All right, so we've built the head, the body, the arms, the forearms. We've got the knees. We have the indicators for the feet. We have a really good baseline right now. Are you guys ready? Miss Pinkalicious, are you ready for armor? I'm always ready for armor. Rock on. You know we're going to do like sort of plate armor, right? Sure. Okay, I lean in close because I'm old. My eyes are uh, armor. Here we go. Boop. Look at all that armor. Okay, I, I select my armor layer, but I'm on the armor layer. I'm still on my base body, base O2 layer. This is what I'm drawing everything on. We can see the armor layer with this little eyeball right here. Now you can't see it. Now you can. So with since this is not blue, now, now if I draw on top of it, it affects that layer. I come down to my base O2. I select it again. You can tell it's blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing armor on this guy. And the reason why I wanted to draw the body, draw through everything, is just important. It's, it's important to build a strong foundation with everything. So I have black selected. I'm going to bring my brush stroke up through here. It's a little bit bigger. And we can tell my lines through here, so let me actually hit my eraser tool. Since I'm on this layer through here. And remember in the beginning I told you that you would be deleting a lot. But it's important that we draw all this so we have proper anatomy. We'll start out this arm right through here. 
what I'm doing is I'm just erasing all the, it would be his left arm and screen right arm. So my brush, uh, with armor, I, I wanted to do an armor plating armor, uh, like plate mail. So what I do is I start with the first, oops, hold on, excuse me. I start with this top plate right through here like this. Check my brush out real quick. On a solid brush, make sure it's solid. And what we can do is we have the baseline through here for the first layer, the first plate. And then what we can do is put a little bit of detail through here like this. And all I'm doing is drawing little lines. Okay, so this is the top layer. The layer under, underneath comes like this. We'll make a small semicircle like this here. Actually, I need to bring my brush up a little bit bigger. Get to know uh, I, your, your hotkeys. Hotkeys are your friend. There we go. Because I really want to have line width variation. I'm going from thick to a little thin through here. Thicker through here. Building on top of it. And then the last layer of the shoulder pad comes through here like this and a very sharp corner. So I have all this done. I turn my, oops, my armor off. This is what it should look like. So I have all these little striations, these little lines, decor, you might want to call it. I'm going to take my brush size down again. And I'm drawing gimbal lines, grimble lines like this. To indicate just, I guess, the core of the armor. Turn my armor layer back on so we can see it. So we can see that the armor plate affects all the shoulder, but we don't have any of the, the arm left. Bring it back through here like this. Mr. Stephen Curtis says, Gribble, Grimble. Sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Greeble. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Greeble, whatever. Greeble. All right. So we know that the, sho the shoulder comes. <laughs> I love Steve. Bunghole. That's not a bad word. That's not a quarter. Uh, <laughs> so we have. Uh, the area where his uh, elbows are going to come at. And we need this. Hold on. Let me bring my brush size down a little bit more. Indication of where the muscle comes in through here like this. Hit Control Z. My brush stroke back up yet again. And this is all finite detail. And I'm really going to put some detail on, into this. Um, the first layer was just to, I guess, to give indications of where everything's going to be held in place. I'm tracing this here like this. I have my first piece here like so. I'll make this, whoops, bring my brush down a little bit like this. Circle here, brush size up again, where everything connects. I have a huge circle area right here, so it gives the area movement to the joint. Another huge circle right through here like so. Let's go ahead and connect them like this. Bring it up here. Down and around. And I wanted them to be aggressive. So I put the spike, I mean, I literally thought of this, the spike it's not like this. I wanted this dwarf to be a fighter. Spike goes forward. So he, whenever he, he uses his elbows, I'm, I'm a big MMA guy. I used to do MMA. Elbows are awesome. Elbows strong. Elbows strong. It's a very dense bone. Whenever you turn your, your arm, 
your radial and ulna bone. It's very thick. And then when you have armor on top of it, you can just tear through things. So I really wanted to have something aggressive for this, this particular dwarf. So I have this here. And I put this here as an indicator of making everything strong. Oops. Let me turn my armor layer off. So we're looking like this right now. And we can literally come in here like this. We have very thick lines, so this will be a thinner line through here like so. I got one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. And more of those little lines, whatever Steve calls them. And we have the muscle here in our forearm. And I'm going to bring some strokes out like this. And this is what we've come up so far. He's a very aggressive dwarf. He's got his, uh, his deltoid all covered up all the way down to his elbow. He's got some skin showing. I mean, you know, you can't, I guess you could have him full armor plate. But that's not what I chose to do. So there's a little weak spot. There's this chink in his armor. Go back to my armor layer. So I, with the dwarves, they have huge, huge, huge gauntlets. Bringing my brush back up to a nice big size. And this literally follows, let me see if I can find my base, first base line. Layer two, background, base. This literally follows along with the very first baseline that, that we, we did. And again, I'm showing this layer. It's not selected. It's not blue. I'm still on this particular layer. So I'm going to come in through here like this. And you make your armor any, in any way you want, any sort of shape. But it's going to be able to flow through here. It flows with the forearm. I decided to bring it like this to make it visually stimulating. Circle where the hand's at. Bring it through here. I have yet another plate through here because the way I look at it is if you're using a sword, some sort of weapon. If anyone's ever done kendo, I'm, again, I'm a big martial artist. I, I've only studied like three or four years of kendo. But you really want to have their gloves on. You have you have sword cards. That's great. But you don't want your hands nicked and messed up. So these are very important to have. So I wanted to make them very, very armored. And then I come through here. Make another interesting shape. And right through here. So I come up through here. Again, because he's plated these different plates, one and two. It helps articulate the movement in his thumb. I'll make a small triangle here. And the circle through here. Trace this line through here. Again, to give an armored plate. You see a knuckle here, a knuckle here, a knuckle here, a knuckle here. So if we count one, two, three, four, five, he has all his fingers. That's a very good thing. From here. I just put a little more detail. I'll take his armor off. That's the base. Sorry about that. Armor off. It's going to take the base off. And we should have something looking similar to this. Now, ideally, I wouldn't have all these thick, super big, thick lines. I'd, I'd want thick to thin. But I really want you guys to be able to see what's going on. So we have this first rung of this plate here that comes in and really protects the forearm. The second layer that protects the lower forearm and the hands. We have a lot of armor through here that can articulate movement. Oops, I need to bring my brush size down. <clears throat> and from here, we can go ahead and adorn it. And here's the thing I do. Uh, I hide a lot of, uh, I guess, initial details. 
in my drawing, I have three little girls. Three, I have a 20-year-old, a 4-year-old, and a 7-year-old. So what I might do is come in through here and start making some of those grimble lines like this. If you see, this is a J and this is an S. Jayla Stevens, that's my seven-year-old. It's kind of a cool way to hide things and make it your own. And then I can come in here and make some more circles. Another layer through here, it can this a thinner line. And we need to worry about the elbow through here like this. Notice it's a small V shape like this. So we have that here. I'll give you guys about three to four minutes to try to catch up. Do we have any questions so far, Ms. Pinkalicious? Go ahead and open it up to everybody else. So we have some questions I want to be able to answer. So far, nothing. Because they're intent on working, I'm proud of these guys and gals. Not bad. Not bad. Huh? Is Pinkalicious anything going on in your area of the world? That, not, not, not especially, no. You got my page five done from the MMO class? Nope. You don't need to get this page five done before next class? I'm hoping so. I should you just say yes and make me happy. You'll do it. I, I know you will. I'm kind of wasting time right now. That's okay, though. Let's go ahead and recap everything we've done so far as, as people working along. Uh, let me see what layer this is. We're clear here. Let's turn this off. We have nothing here. We literally started with... There's so many darn layers now. Here's the armor, beard, base face. The head layer. All right, from our base layer, we drew the head. We drew the big yes, barrel-shaped chest. We the deltoids, the tricep, the bicep. We did all the forearms and stuff. And again, it's very important to go ahead and draw the base. Because you're like, oh, I, I've, I've done this. I don't, I'm going to have armor here. You're not going to get a good read. You're not going to have everything particularly right. Uh, I, and I know Sid is the same way as I, I am. Whenever I started drawing first, when I was uh, a young lad, a young strapping lad of like 15, 13, 14, 15, I just start off drawing the entire contour lines, the outlines, and I get my proportions all messed up. And what I'm really trying to drive home for you guys and gals is we draw everything first. And then once we get our paper doll, in essence, to draw, we can build on top of it. We can make armor. We can draw clothes. And that way, none of the proportions get all mucked up. Can I have an amen, Sid? Amen, brother. What, what? All right, so hopefully everyone's all caught up. If not, I know you will be. So we did the whole plate mill for the shoulders and the, the forearm here. I'll turn my armor back on. Get my brush back. Okay, that's a little bit too thick. I bring it back down. I'm going to bring my eraser tool up through here. I want to erase that just a little bit. All right, since we have this plate mill armor through here, it only makes sense. It doesn't have to be like that, but it makes sense. I'm going to bring my plate mill back over here. And the reason the lines are a little bit thinner is because this is, this is close to the camera, so it will be thicker. So I come back down here. One, two, and three levels through here, because we have one, two, three levels through here like this. Oops, some of that beard will show. And then because we have all this going on with the arm over here, I'm going to bring this over here like this. Circle. We have this big elbow pad right here.
Come back down through here for the hand. I turn my armor back off. And this is what it should look like. And what I'm really trying to, again, drive home to you guys and gals right now, we draw through our characters, and this is the best way to, to clothe them, uh, whether it's a female or, or a male or an elf or an orc. We draw through everything, and then that's how we clothe. So if we look at all the marks through here, we have no marks over through here for this shoulder pad. So I bring my brush down a bit like that, and then I'm going to come up. So make some marks like this. And this forehead let's go ahead and some kind of some scars. So this is what we have so far for a dwarf. I'll turn my armor back on. We have all this plate mail that, that's uh, protecting his, his shoulders, his arms. And what I really kind of wanted to do was with the lower part of the anatomy is to make it, I guess, leather-like. So I'm going to come through here, first level. Real quick, let me do something for you guys. This is all in the bottom. Let me take this layer here. And what I did was I moved my base level on top so you can actually see the lines that I'm drawing through and the armors on bottom. It's important the levels that are below you can see. This armor or this level is selected so now I can start drawing through here like this and it's on top of it. I think that would be a little bit better for you guys and gals. So, with that said, drawing through here, one level. It's going to be a, a kilt, a dress kilt. I come in through here as so. Let's go ahead and raise some of the crotch area right through here. Raise this leg area through here like this. Raise this area right through here like so. This is where his, his kilt it comes up at an angle like a V right through here because this is where his foot's at. We'll wrap around here like so. Bring my brush area down a little bit like this. And I start making small, actually let's turn the space arm, oops, turn the armor off. So I drew where the indications are for the armor. And in my mind's eye, I'm drawing a pattern right through here. Circle, circle, kind of like a padded armor below and beneath. And this, I could bring this line all the way down here, but I want to take it off center a bit. And I am looking at time, so I'm going to move a little bit faster. So we have the face, the shoulder plates, the forearms, the big hand with all the armor on it. Turn my armor layer back on. And we have our base foot. I'm going to hit the eraser tool. Brush tool again. These are small straps that keep everything on his foot. I really want his knees and his uh, his shin. That's the proper terminology. And again, you can have fun with all this. It doesn't have to make a certain pattern. Again, with the aggressive move. Where you can kick forward, I bring this over here. I just start 
using the contour lines like this. So I turn my armor off. And he's starting to look clothed. You know, uh, later on in, in, in different lessons, what I plan on doing is having uh, an already completed character for you guys and gals. And then we're going to start exploring the multi-layer level. We're going to start talking about how you can add tones to it and, and colorization. Uh, right now we're not at that point, but that will be a definitely a different class. So with that said and moving forward, let's go back. You know what? Let's not even mess with the armor. Let's do this. Let's add all this is, is a square through here. I'm going to brush down a little bit more. It's kind of like an ind indicator of a pack that he may have. And from here, I draw a straight line like this. You can have fun with it. Where he has a sword on his back. Let's give him two swords. And then bring my brush quite a bit. What I'm doing is tracing the bottom layers, the bottom contour right through here. Put some shadow on the ground where he's grounded. And we made a dwarf. We made a dwarf tonight. We got the beard going on, we have the eye patch, we have the, the heavy armor plating. And again, if I could go back, I would definitely change the line width variation by quite a bit. Uh, but because of the resolution, yours may be different from mine, I really wanted to have a thick line weight so you guys can see what's going on. And then, I mean, you can color it and make it your own. You can have a top knot. I mean, heck, come on. Let me do this real quick. A little too thick. And he's not had a haircut since he was born for the top knot. You threw a top knot back in there. And what I did was I just made jagged lines. You have fun with the hair. This is the particular style that I'm teaching. It's not photorealistic. I don't know of anybody who has hair like that, but it's a cool read. It's blowing in the wind. It takes up negative white space. So I threw it in there. You don't like it, you don't have to put it in there. So let me ask, is there any questions right now, Miss uh, Pinkalicious? So far, no. All right, well then, uh, I want the first two volunteers, and we have time, we maybe do three and four, but I'd like to see what you guys have come up with so far. Just throw yourself up in the questions panel if you can, if you're ready to go. Now, there's a lot more that we can do, again, uh, with proper line weight variation. There's a lot we can do with the tones, if you had Manga Studio 05, which... I love, I, I really hope everyone gets. I wish I could give it to you, I can't. Uh, and, and shading, There's, we can really make this guy pop with shading. These are future classes that we will we will delve into. So with that said, do we have anybody? I don't care if you're all the way done, let me say what you have. Uh, Clinton asked for two minutes, but we can jump into him if we want to be a little bit mean. Well, well I don't want to be mean. Do you want to be mean, Sid? Um, looks like Wolf Knightley can go, too. Sorry, Wolf, Sorry, Wolf will go first, then. I, I'm, I'm really anxious to see what Wolf's got. Alright. <clears throat> Wolf, how you doing, baby? There. You there? Sorry, I muted him. Here we go. Slay girl. I, I, I was muted on my end, too. Double mute. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't be too uh, excited to see what I did. What? Why not? You're, you're like the it's color guy. very, very rough. What? You're my color 
to go to guy right now, okay? And again, you're just you're moving by leaps and bounds. And what I find really awesome is that his beard is green, his armor is red. And the other, the, the only reason I do that on my side is to keep track of layers so I can draw on top of it. And it, it, I think it's cool that you're like, all right, it's red armor. It's, it's a green beard. I think you have a really good read right here. And given your own, if whenever you take time, you, you could just you could put tons of detail into it, man. Yeah. You made a very cool, dynamic pose for a dwarf tonight in less than two hours. That's yeah. how you feeling about it. So I, it was a pretty big rush. I, I, I kept, uh, I guess, uh, I just think about how much better I could do with time. But, yeah, I, I also did, I just did it to keep track of the layers because I didn't erase. So yeah, it's that, better that, for me not to. No, no, I totally understand. Wolf, you've come a long way, man. I mean, it's night not. and day difference from what, what are you – and I also know that you're working – behind the scenes to become a better artist. Just not following me, but you're doing your own thing. And I encourage everybody out there, just don't follow me. Uh, Feng Zhu, I love the guy. I love to hate him. I wish I could be like him. And one day I'll be as good as him. But that's my goal. Everyone should have a goal. And it's okay. I can't compare myself to him because he's been doing a lot more than I have. But I have a goal to work towards. So when you see this, when you see Wolf's, image here online don't go man this is awesome my mind stinks no don't do that it's important to know that you have your own personal goals and wolf you're doing great you're an inspiration Thanks, dude i love you Thanks. you owe me a beer okay all right roger that proud of you keep it up all right who's the next victim it looks like clinton is ready now roger that, roger that. <laughs> Well, I'm glad, glad Mr. Wolf volunteered because I would have, I had to e scan it and email it to myself in order to get it. <laughs> I love what you did, man. Really good. I, I love the choice of your armor. You got the positioning down pretty darn good. I, I really want to see what you can do with this full tilt. I love that you put the goggles on the forehead. Man, I have like a full classroom of, of Curtis people. They're their own thinkers. And you know what? I'd have it no other way. Uh, I, I like that I'm like the baseline. You guys have created everything yourselves. Well done, Mr. Clinton. Thank you. So, all right. So, to gauge myself, I'm a Leo and an only child. Am I helping you out? Am I teaching you? What else can I do to help out? Do I need to slow down? Am I going too fast for you? What, what needs to be done? I mean, it's a little fast, but I'm not that far behind. I, I've been keeping up for most of the time, and um, I think it's great. I mean, before I started watching these classes, I couldn't draw worth heck. It was it was pitiful. I mean, even Stop my that, silly even man. The, no, I'm serious. It was bad before I started watching these videos. It was really bad. Right. You did a great job. I'm serious. And, again, this is Mr. Clinton. He's uh, the newest member on the MMO team. I'm really proud of him, what he's doing. He, he like Wolf, is, is working beyond the scope of everybody, uh, I, I guess, everybody. Uh, they're, they're taking other classes outside of this class, and, it, and this class is complimenting them. And I can't say enough about you, Mr. Clinton. I'm glad you're part of the MMO class, and you're doing great. You keep it up. Thank you. I will. You're quite welcome, sir. And don't forget your, your MMO's assignment. No, I won't. That's Otherwise, I, I, I will send Sid after you, and she she will beat you with a wet noodle. You're okay, Isn't dude. Isn't that right, Isn't right Sid? <laughs> All right, we'll take one more victim. Who's, who's the next one? We can take Miguel. Miguel! Miguel! I really need to learn Spanish, man, besides, besides bad, bad words. I feel so I feel ashamed. So ashamed. He, how many languages do you speak, Miguel? Well, I speak 15,000 languages and dead languages as well. Are you there, Mr. Are you there, Mr. Miguel? 
Are you muted on your end, your... Miguel? Because you're unmuted here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My mic was muted. Sorry. <laughs> Silly man. Look what you got going on. All right. What I, I like to see you have a great, good foundation for the foot. Uh, his screen right, his left foot. <clears throat> It's, it's being hidden in the cloak. I don't know if you had the chance to, to finish that, but if you can bring that foot out more, it would get a much better read. Excuse me while I cough. His left foot? It would be his, yeah, his left foot. That oh, looks like, yeah. yeah, right through there. It looks like uh, his, his kilt sort of area. Is no, I here. haven't, I haven't drawn it, but... Well, that's yeah. why it's not there. Never mind. I feel like a silly person. Yeah, it goes all over here. <laughs> awesome. Okay. You have it there. You stopped drawing it yet. Uh, so how are you doing tonight, Mr. Miguel? How do you feel about everything? Well, you're going a little bit fast, but about everything, it's okay. With a little bit of practice, I could keep up with you. Good. You will keep up with me because you're another member you're not as you're not like you said. You're not the newest member now anymore to the MMO team, uh, Mr. Clinton. Is, so you have to haze him, and then you have to step up your game as well because man, he's gaining really fast on you. So I'm really proud to everybody in the MMO class that's, that is here. That will make them better artists. Miguel, you're doing great, dude. You keep it up, all right? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Very welcome. Real quick, last question. How many how many languages do you speak? Well, uh, okay. English is my the other language and a little bit of Italian. Grazie. It's about all the Italian I know. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> yeah, what you said. Well done. Well done. All, right, all right, Miss Sid, bring it back to my screen. We'll talk about the next week's assignment. <clears throat> All right, a quick recap. We start out the barrel chest, the shoulder is the deltoid area, the bicep, tricep, it's a dynamic pose. You get in my screen, it is very thick, the line weight variation. Uh, as I look at it, I'm not super happy with it because I really want to convey that line width is very important. But I also wanted to, you guys to be able to see your screen. I, I'm not sure about resolution and all that. Uh, but your assignment, just like the fairy one, what I want you guys to do is to watch the video again and take your time, draw the dwarf out. Uh, and the kicker is give them different weapons because my weapons, two swords in the back, they, uh, they're quick little hatch marks, little marks here and here. Put a weapon in his hand or put a weapon in his back uh, that he, he can take out. Uh, so that will be your assignment. And if you want to muck around with this hair, that would be great too. But follow along. I want at least this pose. Uh, this will show me and show everybody else that you can follow simple directions. And then you make it your own. Uh, I appreciate everybody hanging in here tonight. Uh, I did move fast. Uh, again, I don't believe in having more than like a two and a half hour class. You can only absorb as much as your bottom can. I don't want to make anyone's bottom numb. So with that said, I'll open it up one last time for any questions, comments, or concerns from the panel. Ms. Sid, if you can look at uh, BuzzNet, I definitely want to have some feedback. Any questions? So far, we are clear. Brilliant. Brilliant. If we are clear, then we know our assignment. Just to recap one more time, I want this pose. I love all the Curtis people and the Curtis free thinkers out there. I'm Mary, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, but the assignment, I want this, this pose or as close as you can to it. And then you can make it your own. You can do something different the hair, different the armor. But at least we'll all have the same baseline that we can start from and we can look at. So that is the assignment for next week. Uh, keep drawing. The only way to get better is to draw every single day. Until next time, keep your feet on the ground and your ankles slightly above them. Uh, Facebook me, Derek Stevens. I'm the bald guy. You can't miss me. Or uh, you can get me, uh, get a hold of me at 3dbuzz.com. I am the crow, T-H-E-C-R-O-W. And uh, 
give me a PM if you need to. I want to help you out. Uh, I want to thank Ms. Sig Curtis very much. It's her first time running one of my shows as my handler. Thank you for keeping me on track and all the stuff, the technical stuff that I have no idea about what you're doing over there. Uh, thank Miss Angie. And I appreciate everybody being here. With that, we will we will stop it.